This is my Laurel Rome 1602 computer. The 1602 computer is a militarized version of the Data General Nova 16-bit microcomputer. It does not use a discrete processor chip, but instead has the processor made up of individual TTL circuits. The processor has a total of four registers or accumulators and a stack pointer. This one does not have the floating point unit. Every wire has to be identified. Soldered to the pin. Checked. And then put in place on the plug. And there's 55 wires all together. Here's the computer by itself without the control console. And what I'm going to do is go ahead and remove the cover. And when you look inside, you can see there are a group of cards with four core memory cards, one, two, three, and four, in the back of the system, a CPU card, and then interface cards in front of that. It's a special module removal tool that you could take and insert in alignment holes on the module and remove the card from the system. In this case, this is the CPU card here. Uh, this is built all using 5400 series uh, military grade 7400 TTL family devices. They're all rated for ridiculous amounts of vibration and temperature and things like that. Now that card seated. If I wanted to pull like an I.O. card, I'll come and loosen the locks take the tool insert it in the card and the module will come out this is uh, one of the parity modules which has nothing on it it just really carries some of the control signals from card to card. In theory, there could be I.O. cards in all of this, but this machine only has a control panel interface, tape drive, and I.O. interface. The rest are all blank parity modules. On the front of the system is the AC power input, the power on reset button, a boot button, and a bite light. The bite light is a self-test system that if that light's on, the system is up and running and there's no issues with it. There's a series of 55 pin plugs with each plug wired to one of each of the accessory sockets. That's what the system looks like all together. We'll go ahead and turn the AC power on. And, uh, and if I wanted to start it, I can hit the start switch. And it will actually start running the program that's in there. You'll see the run and execute light come on. And the data display goes off. The address display stays on in case the system wants to display any messages as to its status. 
what I'm going to do is stop the system by hitting the stop. And in this case, I'll uh, go ahead and load the uh, bootstrap program. And the bootstrap's loaded into memory right now. You can see the uh, bootstrap lives at the top of the memory on the system. So the expanded memory light comes on. And I can see at that address, that's the data that's in there. Looking at the examine switch, I could go to the next and step through each memory location and examine what's written to that memory location. Or if I want to enter a memory location directly, in this case I'll uh, select binary 1000, examine, and now you can see I'm at address 1000. And that's what data is in there right now, which is nothing. But if I wanted to load that binary number into that location, I'll hit deposit. And now 16 is entered into that location. I could use the examine switch and go next and see what's in those locations. If I wanted to return to location 1000, I'll go back to examine. And that way I could see what's in that memory location. In addition to that, I could also look at the four registers that are in the machine. The registers, or accumulators as they call them, are 0, 1, 2, 3. So there are four registers total. You could examine register 0, which has a 4 in it. Register 1, which has nothing in it. Register 2, which has 1,000 in it. And register 3, which is 177606. If I wanted to change the contents of a register, I could load a number by just using the deposit. So that was register 3 has that number in it, but if I switch up the deposit, now I've deposited 200 into that register. If I go examine, that's what I'll see.